So one of the first things you need to do before you can use QGIS is download and install it. And so I'll walk through quickly here how to download QGIS for a Windows 10 environment. I go to my favorite browser here, the DuckDuckGo in a Firefox browser, and I type QGIS, and I see I get a number of hits. The first one, welcome to the QGIS project. I could go straight to the download, but I'm going to step you in the front door here, and you see you get this QGIS project page and there's all sorts of links you can follow at your leisure but we're going to get to the quick now where we download the QGIS and of course the questions come which of these do I want to choose there's this OSGO 4W installer 64 and 32 bit and down below there's standalone installers for now let's just go with the standalone installer you have to make two decisions which one are you going to download there's the always the latest release i think they're in 310 now but <clears throat> they'll be 311 312 richest on features new stuff <clears throat> excuse me but they uh sometimes have quirks or things don't work quite as planned usually the new stuff might have some bugs in it and there's the long-term release this is the most stable so i would suggest you download that and then the question comes 64-bit or 32-bit now most newer PCs you'd be using the 64-bit, but we can check down here in the Windows Start if I look at this little gear and then go down to Systems at the bottom, oops, About, and it will list characteristics of your system. If you look through the device specifications, get to the system type here, it tells me that I have a 64-bit operating system. So I can look then through this Windows, the gear, and then about my system and find out, okay, this is 64-bit. So this is the one I want. I want this standalone installer for the long-term release, 64-bit. I'll left-click, and it'll ask me, yeah, do I want to save this file? Where do I want to save it? Mine are going to the downloads. I'll come back when it's fully downloaded. So I can look then in File Explorer in my Downloads location, and I can see then that it downloaded today this QGIS application. So this is the setup. If I double left click on this, it should give me a splash screen, say, do I want to open this and start? And then it says, yes, do I want to use the setup wizard? So I'll click through a series of screens agreeing to the default locations in this case, and um, I can select um, tested data sets I'm not going to right now and again it will install showing a bar here coming across I'll come back when it's finished so okay now I've just about completed this bar it took about two minutes to go all the way across for me and it says that now this Madiero has been installed so I'll say finish and I hopefully have a working version of QGIS. I'm going to go ahead and close these websites and then look for QGIS. And so if I, again, left click down here on the start window, sometimes near the top, you'll get recently added. But if not, we should see down here a alphabetical list of my applications. And here I have QGIS. So if I open this folder, I have this QGIS desktop. And so I'll click on that and QGIS will start. Again, it tells me it has this long-term release with this splash screen. So QGIS starts here, and here I have my typical QGIS window. So I have basically a set of icons across the top and a couple of windows that open up. One is my main table of contents window here on the left showing layers, the main panel or pane, and my main operations here as drop-down lists, for example, I can look at layers or plugins or vectors or rasters. And then there's a set of icons that are quick shortcuts to these commonly used operations. We'll cover these in later lessons. So that's the download and installation of QGIS. So we know it runs. We'll go over setting up QGIS and loading some data in the next video.